Hello everyone, this is the CircuitPython Weekly for June 28th, 2021. This is the time of the week where we get to talk all things CircuitPython. Uh, my name is Scott and I'm sponsored by Adafruit to work on CircuitPython. CircuitPython is a version of Python designed to run on tiny computers called microcontrollers, so it makes it really easy to program them to code them. Uh, CircuitPython development is primarily sponsored by Adafruit, so if you want to support them in CircuitPython, consider purchasing hardware from Adafruit.com. Uh, this meeting is hosted on the Adafruit Discord server. You can join anytime by going to the URL adafru.it slash discord. We hold the meeting in the CircuitPython dev text channel and the CircuitPython voice channel. This meeting typically happens on Mondays at 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific, except when it coincides with the U.S. holiday. Uh, if the meeting time is changed, we'll notify you via Discord. If you wish to be notified about changes to the meeting, we can add you to the CircuitPython Nisa's Discord role. There's also a calendar available that we try to keep updated if you'd like to subscribe to that. And note, next week is on Tuesday, not on Monday. Um, this meeting is recorded. We will record the audio from the voice channel and the video of the text channel. If you'd rather not have your voice recorded, you are still welcome to participate. The video of this meeting will be posted to YouTube, and the audio is released as a podcast. If you find this podcast is not available on your favorite podcast service, please let us know. Uh, there is a note stock to accompany the meeting and recording. If you wish to participate but can't make it to the meeting, you can leave hug reports and status updates for us in the document. We'll read them off during the meeting for you. Uh, the notes document also contains timestamps to go along with the video, so you can use the doc to view only the parts of the video that interest you most. The meeting tends to run 60 to 90 minutes, so this gives you the option to skip around. A link to the notes document is posted to the CircuitPython dev channel on the Adafruit Discord every week. Check the pinned messages to find the latest notes doc. This meeting is held in five parts. The first part is community news. This is a look at all things CircuitPython and Python on hardware in the community. It's a preview of the Python on Microcontrollers newsletter. The second part is the state of CircuitPython libraries in Blinka. This is a statistical overview of the entire project. It's a chance to look at the project by the numbers separate from what we're all up to. The third part is hug reports. Hug reports is an opportunity to highlight the good things folks are doing, taking time to recognize the awesome folks in our community. The fourth part is status updates. Status updates is an opportunity to sync up on what we've been up to. Take a couple minutes and talk about what you've been doing in the last week since the last meeting and what you'll be up to over the next week until the next meeting. The fifth part is in the weeds. In the weeds is an opportunity for more long form discussions. These discussions can come out of status updates or be something you've identified ahead of time as too long for status updates. And that covers how the meeting will go. Um, with that, I'll get started with community news. And uh, just to note, uh, sorry if there's a, a fan noise uh, in the background of my speaking. It is quite hot here in Seattle today, so I've got a fan to keep me a little bit cooler. Um, okay, so community news. First up, um, thanks to Ask Patrick W for adding this. Uh, Circup 0.9.9 is out which includes support for the new .mpy format in CircuitPython 7, tab-based autocomplete for library names, and support for the, for the community bundle. pip install circuit today. A thank you to all the folks who put that together. Next up, Texas Instruments answers questions on their new TI-84 plus CE Python graphing calculator plus an update. The calculator uses an at SAMD21 chip as the CircuitPython coprocessor. In May of 2021, Adafruit saw that there was a fork of CircuitPython reported to be running on the new TI-84 Plus CE Python graphing calculator by Texas Instruments, and they had to get one, and did. Adafruit then reached out to folks at TI Education slash TI Calculators and asked if they could send over some questions to their teams, and they said yes. See the questions and responses on the Adafruit blog. Plus, the calculator is running a fork of CircuitPython on an Atmel at SAMD 21 e 18 which is the same chip as Adafruit Gemma M0, Trinket M0, and many Trinkies. Next up, Adabox 19 is shipping in July. Join now at adabox.com. The next Adabox from CircuitPython ships in a few days. Curated Adafruit products, unique collectibles, and exclusive discounts delivered quarterly. Subscribe now and give as, give as a gift. And also, we should note that the product in Adabox 19 and most Adaboxes do run CircuitPython, so not totally out of whack uh, here. Next up, uh, we've added a keep 
pad module, thanks to Dan, uh, which has support for vector and matrix key scanning in CircuitPython. Dan has at completed initial work on a com comprehensive keypad module for CircuitPython. Uh, there's a GitHub link and also a Adafruit blog slash YouTube link. The keypad module provides three different ways to scan a set of keys provided by the classes keys, which is one key per pin, key matrix, which is a row column matrix, and shift register keys, which uses an external shift register to read the values of the keys, I believe. Key scanning is done in the background and includes debouncing. Key transition events pressed or released are put in a queue and implemented by classes event and event queue. Next in news, microcontroller shortages projected into 2022. Shortages of microcontrollers used to run millions of devices worldwide are acute and projected to last into next year. Chips from Microchip slash Atmel, Nordic, ST, and others are affected. Due to timing, the new Raspberry Pi RP2040 and the ESP chips from Espresso Systems do not seem as impacted at the moment. The shortages have led developers to scour the internet for dwindling supplies. For chips that are unobtainable, some products are being redesigned using more easily available microcontrollers, which can be a costly hardware and software process. There's links to CNBC, EE News Europe, Seeking Alpha, and Bloomberg all in this article. Uh, two more. Uh, camera support coming to the ES uh, to CircuitPython on the ESP32 S2. Uh, testing the ESP32 S2 Kaluga Dev Kit version 1.3 with the latest PR from Jeff to add native camera support to CircuitPython. In only a few lines of code, it can and it few lines of code, it can initialize a display, read a buffer from the camera, and then blit it out to the onboard 20. 240 by 320 screen. There are now libraries for both the OV7670 and the nicer slash newer OV2640. Amazing work by the team to get this so smooth. Last up for news, uh, we have an online editor for CircuitPython. YouTube user River Wong posts about a CircuitPython online IDE, which is web-based requiring zero software setup. This would be ideal for any computer, but especially for machines where installing additional software is not possible, such as at libraries, public spaces, and on-school Chromebooks. There's a Adafruit blog, GitHub, YouTube, and try it out here links in the notes. Um, and that's it. Uh, as a reminder, this is part of the CircuitPython weekly newsletter. It's a CircuitPython community-run newsletter emailed every Tuesday. The complete archives are available at www.adafruitdaily.com slash category slash circuit python. It highlights the latest Python on hardware related news from around the web, including circuit python, python, and micropython developments. To contribute your own news or project, edit next week's draft on GitHub by going to github.com slash adafruit slash circuit python dash weekly dash newsletter. Check the drafts folder there to see the latest draft. Um, and submit a pull request. You can just click the pencil icon when viewing the draft there to, to edit right in GitHub. Uh, if that's uh, if you don't have a GitHub account or that's uh, you can't figure that out, you may also tag a tweet with hashtag CircuitPython on Twitter or email cpnews at adafruit.com. That's it for community news. Lots of great stuff. Next up, uh, the state of CircuitPython libraries in Blinka. This is a chance for us to take a statistical uh, look at the health of circ the broad CircuitPython project, and we do it in a few parts. So. Uh, first, we like to look overall. So overall, we had 39 pull requests merged from 27 different authors, which is amazing. Uh, some new names that are in this list, uh, CD, MUHLB, MULB, maybe, uh, TWA, TWA127, uh, D. Griswo, uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. and a lot of the other names look familiar, so thank you to everyone for... Uh, creating all those pull requests and getting them merged in. Speaking of merging them in, we had 11 reviewers uh, who take a look at those PRs and make sure that they uh, match the expectations we have for our code, uh, that they work and they look well-structured and well-written. Um, so thank you to all our, of our reviewers. We're always looking for more folks. We had 29 closed issues by 11 people, 18 opened by 10 people. 
So uh, we're net down 11, which is great. So thank you to everyone who's taking a look at all of the open issues. Uh, it's really, really important to, to take a look at those. Okay, for the core, we had 20 pull requests merge, which is a lot. Uh, thank you to our 17 different authors. We do do translations, so I suspect that translations were a non-trivial part of those 20. So thank you to all of our translators for keeping up to date with the strings that we add as we've been adding new stuff. Uh, we had five reviewers, so thank you to all of our reviewers for the core. Uh, pull request wise, we have 19 open pull requests. The oldest is 224 days old, which is a while, but I believe that we've actually uh, whittled, whittled it down a little bit, um, or we're about to. We have a couple that were outstanding for a while that uh, thanks to Higher Effect for getting through those. So uh, 19 is really good. It's great to be under 20. And a lot of these, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Eight are less than a week old, so that's pretty awesome. So thank you to everybody for pull requests for the core. Uh, Issues-wise on the core, we had 13 closed issues by five people, 14 open by seven people, so we're net up uh, one for a total of 465 open issues. Um, but, you know, we're, we're keeping real close to pace. Uh, to keep track of how we're doing in terms of issues, we use milestones to kind of categorize importance. Uh, and we have four issues not assigned a milestone, which means they need to take a look at and be triaged. Um, that's kind of high, but typically over the weekend we get those coming in and, and we knock those out at the start of the week. We have 66 open issues for 7.0, which is a lot. Um, and I suspected that we'll kind of shuffle those around as, as we whittle down our priorities for the 7.0 launch. Um, overall, uh, we're still adding a lot to the alphas. Um, so that's been really great. And uh, please try the alphas. We'll, maybe we'll try to get one out this week so that people can try it. But lots of good stuff coming. And once the alphas settle down, we'll try to really drive home to uh, a stable 7.0 release. Because it's little, been a little while. And we, we don't want too much happening in 7.0 that's not really stable. Um, because then we end up just asking people to use what we call unstable releases anyway. Okay. Uh, and with that, let me kick it over to Katni for the library stats. Thanks, Scott. So this applies to all of the Adafruit CircuitPython libraries, which is everything that starts with Adafruit underscore CircuitPython underscore, and a few extras such as Cookie Cutter and the Community Bundle. So across all of those, we had 16 pull requests merged by 11 authors and 10 reviewers. And that leaves us with 40 open pull requests. We had 14 issues closed by seven people and three open by three people, leaving us with 306 open issues. If you're interested in contributing to CircuitPython on the Python side of things, consider going to circuitpython.org slash contributing. You'll find all of this information and more, including a list of open pull requests and a list of open issues. Search through the pull request, see if there's anything you, uh, if you're interested in reviewing, search through the pull request, see if uh, there's anything that interests you, take a look at it for syntax, that sort of thing. If you've got the hardware, test it, and leave a comment letting us know that you did that. It's a great way to get started reviewing. And once you're comfortable with that, we can uh, move you into our review team. Uh, as for contributing code, uh, check out the open issues. If you're new to things, good first issue is a place to start. Otherwise, you can check out uh, bug or enhancement as labels for um, slightly more uh, involved things. And um, comment on the issue and let us know you're trying it out, and uh, then go from there. There is a guide on contributing to CircuitPython using Git and GitHub, so if you're new to that, don't let that intimidate you. And um, we are always available to help, uh, so you can ask questions on Discord and so on. Uh, this week we had three new libraries, uh, Display.io SH1106, OV2640, and NeoKey, and a list of updated libraries which I will not read off. Overall, we're still working through the open current open PRs. We're down to 40 as of this report, and we're still looking to get through the rest. We're keeping up with new ones pretty well, which actually I looked at it, we're keeping up with new ones very well. But there are still many older ones that need to be dealt with. If you're waiting on a reply to a PR and it's been more, the, more than one to two business days, please feel free to ping us. We may end up closing some of the older PRs that haven't had any progress on them, but don't worry if it's something you can get to later, you can open a new PR or we can reopen current ones. 
Um, as well, most of the repos have been moved to main. I say most, um, I'm pretty sure it's been all of them, but remember if you're contributing to libraries, you need to ensure that your setup is up to date. The contribute to circuit Python with Git and GitHub guide has a page on starting over fresh, which as long as you copy any current work out of your repo is the easiest way to update. You just basically delete your fork, delete your local uh, version of the repo and start fresh. There is also information in that guide on manually updating your local setup and your remote setup. If you'd rather go through all those steps, um, there's information on how to do that as well. But we do recommend um, if you are just getting started or you haven't contributed in a while, um, the delete and start fresh is, a, is an easier way to go. And that's where we are with the libraries. Thank you, Katni. All right, next up, let's hear from Melissa about the state of Blinka. Uh, hello. So Blinka is our CircuitPython compatibility layer for Raspberry Pi, MicroPython, and other single board computers. Uh, this week we had um, three pull requests merged by two authors and two reviewers. There are five open pull requests still, and there were two closed issues by two people and one open by one person, leaving a net of 58 open issues. There were 11,745 high wheels downloads in the last month, and we currently are supporting 75 boards. And that's it for Blinka. Awesome. Thank you, Melissa. All right, and that's it for CircuitPython, state of CircuitPython. <laughs> My brain is turning to mush. Um, okay, hug reports. Hug reports is done as a round robin, so I will start, and then we'll go through the folks who added themselves to the notes doc. Uh, if you've marked it in the notes doc as for me to read, uh, or you're not listening, <laughs> and I'll read it off for you. So first up, um, for myself, um, Hug Reports Dan for having the patience with my reviewing of the Key Matrix API. Hug Reports Microdev for getting the ESP IDF 4.3 uh, change finished and ANIC data for testing. And uh, as I looked back through the Discord, I just uh, wanted to say thank you to Mad Bodger for helping on the Discord. Um, not the only person on Discord by far, but uh, somebody I just thought could use a shout out. And with that, let's circle around and hear from Anne. Hi, everybody. Um, I attend these meetings, but oftentimes I don't speak because uh, I'm still trying to ensure the newsletter is uh, ready to uh, be published. But I feel confident that this one is. It's really full of great stuff. Um, and Scott let you know how to contribute. I mean, I really appreciate those people who have sent in their projects or tips or anything. Um, just tagging it on Twitter or sending it into cpnews at adafruit.com. It it really helps me in ensuring I get uh, you all the the latest information and the information that's pertinent to what you're doing. So um, I'm I'm still doing that. I'm. I'm ensuring uh, your your guides are all top-notch quality. A lot of Adafruit people have are just making great guides, but um, I'm hoping to get back to some projects too um, now that I've kind of got things under control. So um, that's about it for me. Awesome, thank you, Ann. Happy to have you back and uh, okay. participating. All right, next up, we have notes from Ask Patrick W, who says, Hark report to Neurodoc and Le Samurai Propre for their awesome work on Circa. Next up is notes from C. Grover, who says, Group Hug. Uh, Christian Walters, who says, Absent teaching a MicroPython course, which is awesome. Says a hug report to Higher Effect for picking up my languishing pull requests about sex set next code file and get previous traceback. I apologize for going MIA on this. I needed a break at one point and then the break got longer and longer and I got distracted by other things. No problem, Christian. Happy to have all the contributions anyway. Alright, next up is Dan. 
Okay, uh, thanks Scott for reviewing the Keypad module, which he did when he returned from vacation. Um, we had an extensive discussion about the API and we seem to have settled on a, a good compromise. It seems to be good for everybody. Um, thanks Scott for doing the initial version of the BLE workflow, which is file transfer right now. We're looking forward to the next batch of things, which is uh, REPL over BLE. That'll be fantastic. And this whole idea of a BLE workflow opens up a whole bunch of new work cases, which are uh, use cases, which are going to be extremely interesting. Uh, thanks to Jeff for uh, reviving the idea of providing some kind of um, wraparound millisecond ticks um, capability, which is especially useful for boards that don't have long integers. And thanks to Great Bim, also known as a cranky turtle, uh, um, for finding a problem with USB HID, uh, the serial devices there, which when they sent large amounts of data, it just dropped things. And I found some, uh, some bugs in the buffer management code. It was very useful for somebody to test that. So thanks. OK. Awesome. Thanks, Dan. Next up is Foamy Guy. All righty. Thanks, Scott. Um, first out this week to Les Samurai Porpe uh, for some help on uh, bundle building issues that I ran into over the weekend, as well as found some other uh, problems and proposed fixes inside of Blinket Display.io. Uh, big thanks there to uh, Jeff for continuing to make improvements on the stubs building um, process, uh, Dan H for working on that key matrix uh, scanning that has been mentioned a few times. I'm definitely looking forward to playing uh, with that on the macro pad once I get mine. Um, to C. Walter and Hireffect and anybody else, if I missed any, that worked on that set next code file uh, functionality, I think that's really a super cool thing, um, and I'm excited to find some usages for that. I think that's a really great functionality. Uh, and then a group hug. Thanks. Thanks, Foamy Guy. Uh, next up is Hireffect. Hitting all the buttons except the one that I need just to say group hug. Oh my god. No worries. Minimize my window and then, like, uh, all right, anyway. Uh, yes, group hug. Group hug this week. We're happy to hear from you. Thank you. All right, next up is Jeff. Hello. Uh, first, I want to thank Damien and Gemma. They were commenting on a PR that I filed with CircuitPython that is of interest to MicroPython. Uh, so that's exciting. I'll talk a little bit more about that in my status update. Uh, thanks to Dan for some code reviews on the weekend. He's always around, and if I'm doing something interesting, he's interested too, and, and that really feels nice. Uh, thanks to Mad Bodger and Lady Ada for taking a look at a PCB design of mine, offering comments, and also making me think about it again until I spotted more problems. And this ties into one of my uh, 2021 New Year's resolutions, which is I want to design more PCBs. Uh, thanks to Katni for some private advice. Uh, she helped me create a code of conduct in another community where I hang out. Nice. Um, and I didn't initially have the courage to do that, but I got the encouragement I needed. And uh, so far, so good. Thanks to Dylan and to Katni again for some Adabot sleuthing uh, last week over the weekend. And I think again this morning, there were just a last few things are f figuring out about that. So it's important to see that maintained, but I imagine it doesn't feel very glamorous. And I just added a hug for Christian Walther. I wanted to say um, thanks for the initial version of some very interesting additions and a reminder to take breaks without guilt when you need them. The community will be here uh, whenever you're ready to come back. And we're happy to see you if you're dipping your toes back in right now. <laughs> That's what I got. Thanks, Jeff. Uh, next up is Jerry. Hey, uh, group hug. Awesome. Thank you, Jerry. Yeah. Next up is Katney. All right, so I have a hug report for Dylan for moving a few more repos to main, the main default branch and for working on tracking down some issues that came out of those moves. To Summersoft for submitting a fix for a dependency versioning issue on Adabot. To Justin for helping out with an Adabot issue and finding what appears to be the fix, even though it was a bit obscure. Um, it was something that GitHub probably should have caught and or been prepared for with the move to main. Uh, but it wasn't, and I, I totally understand if, if they just didn't take into account the possibility of the situation that we created with Adabot, because um, I've missed stuff too. 
<laughs> um, to Le Samurai Pupre, Jose David, Ask Patrick W. Fomi Guy and Deshipu for providing input and suggestions on the cookie cutter PR for the CircuitPython Community Code of Conduct. And to John Park for designing the chroma key ring bracket for camera lenses and webcams. It's a really neat design and it works really well. That's what I've got. Awesome. Thank you, Katni. Last up, we have Maker Melissa. Uh, hello. Um, I wanted to give a hug to the Samurai Pupra for uh, the batch of PRs over the weekend and a group hug in general. That's it. Thanks, Melissa. All right, next up is a new section called status updates it's done as a round robin as well uh, but this time we want to hear a little bit about what you're working on uh, what you did in the last week and what you're doing on the coming week um, some people are more structured about that than than i am uh, okay so first up um Beely file transfer code is checked in so if you're running an nrf52 840 board you should be able to uh It'll, it'll advertise and you should be able to bond to it and all that stuff. Um, Beely serial code is next. Uh, it's almost ready for review. This allows you to get access to the serial connection to CircuitPython. So seeing what the code output is and also um, being able to do the REPL if you wanted to as well. Uh, the next step is to help push one or more apps forward so people can use it. Uh, what platform would be best? Um, let me just say what platform in the chat and uh, if you put if you want iOS put an I if you want Android put an A and if you want web Bluetooth put a W or something I'm just kind of curious I I suspect I'll be taking a look at web Bluetooth uh, because that will cover a lot of bases uh, and is not something that we're actively working on um, although we got three A's <laughs> um, we will do Android eventually we'll do all three of these eventually we are working on iOS actively um, so yeah, we'll get there. Um, and then next week I'm out. So Monday through Wednesday sometime, we're going out to the ocean kind of at the end of at the end of the 4th of July weekend. So I will not be in the meeting next week. And then uh, what I forgot to put in the notes or, or failed to is I'm actually recording a podcast. Um, recording a podcast starting uh, or on Wednesday, which is the a talk python with me podcast and we're doing it i'm doing it joint with damien which should be really fun um so thanks to them in advance for that and uh i don't know what the lag time is so i don't know how long it'll take until it gets out but uh doing that this week and yeah jeff says live stream on friday yeah that's my plan i know i think adafruit proper has the day off but um since i'm taking two days off next week i figure i'll work on friday i think that's I think that matches up with uh, my partner's days off as well. So that's the plan. So we'll we'll live stream on Friday um, as planned, and hopefully it won't be as hot as it is today. <laughs> um, okay, and with that, let's kick it uh, over to Anne for our status updates. Well, I'm looking out my window waiting for the UPS person because my Adafruit macro pad mm -hmm. should be arriving. And I watched Scott's uh, deep dive on Friday and really caught the bug for uh, wanting to make a, a really nice keypad and, and play around with it. I, I have some ideas, and the community's making some great ideas, too. So uh, that's in my immediate future. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, I need to finish mine. Yeah, I, I, and I got that little, um, what is it? Paw pad key too. I mean, yeah, that's really. Cool. It feels really good. And, uh, I hope you stay cool, Scott. I will. I should put my my partner is texting me pictures of the cats staying cool. Maybe I'll good. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, it, it's it's okay. I will put. I'll post this kitty picture in Discord. Um, okay. <laughs> Getting distracted by cat pictures. Um, all right, let me read off some notes. So from C. Grover, we have uh, still on the path to upgrade old Arduino projects to CircuitPython. Have a working version of Fake TV for Engineers running on the Neo Trinky, as well as on the original Metro M4 based project chassis. Uh, trying to come up with a new, more descriptive name for the Oppressive Pacific Northwest Omega Heat Dome. 
Uh, family, family friendly suggestions are welcome. Oh yeah, like see Grover, how are, how hot are you seeing over there? Because you're on the further away from lots of water than we are. Uh, okay, Dan's up next. Whoa. Okay. Um, as we all mentioned, the keypad module was merged. Uh, it's not on release yet, and I'll talk about that in a minute. And I'm working on a guide to explain the three different ways of scanning keypads with some simple examples. Um, various new bugs cropped up on the past week, and I fixed them, or at least recorded them. Uh, so just sort of keeping up, but are we, there are still a lot of bugs in 7.0 that we either, either need to fix or push off. So we'll um, be looking at those in the future. Uh, right now, I'm debugging a problem with RP2040 PWM audio, which uh, you play away from several times and it stops playing. And uh, it's not clear what's wrong at all now, but that's, the ma that's another major thing I'm working on. It would be really great to have another release uh, soon, which would incorporate both keypad and also Scott's um, initial BLE work so people could play with it. So I'd like to do that in the next few days. Um, one of the things that I need to change before we go, before we lock down the API for seven is to uh, change uh, USB HID dot device so that it can theoretically support more than one uh, report ID in an HID report descriptor. So uh, maybe I'll try to make a change uh, for that very soon so that we can uh, at least get the API stabilized. Okay. Awesome. And I think I might try to stat, take a stab at the PWM out API change for seven as well, which is accepting the pin instead of a PW or no pulse out. Oh, okay. Yeah. I know what you mean. Yeah. Yeah. That would be good to get in seven as well. Um, okay. Next up is foamy guy. Alrighty, uh, let's see. It's not quite ready. There we go. Uh, for last week, I completed the guide for the rotary trinky brightness crank uh, that I showed on Show and Tell. Um, I started work on a, a bundle repo for the CircuitPython org. Um, I got the repo set up and I got the first library added, but there's still a little bit uh, to do, so I'll be looking to finish that off this week. Um, and then a uh, smaller one, I made a quick uh, PR to add the SH1106 library to the bundle. Um, and then for this week, um, I'm going to be working on that bundle uh, library, like I mentioned, for the CircuitPython org. To, uh, and then um, also working on moving over the last few widgets, um, including, uh, importantly, one of the ones with uh, subfolders. So it's like a package instead of a single Python file. And it turns out those are treated slightly differently inside the bundling process. Um, so that'll be good to test out uh, part of the work on that bundle repo. Um, and then I'll be looking into some of the Blinka Display I.O. Uh, issues and a fix that came up over the weekend uh, to test those out. And then the last thing is uh, somebody mentioned, I think during the deep dive, um, asking about drawing arcs with Display I.O. And I thought that sounded like a neat challenge. I'll have to brush up on a bit of geometry um, to make it happen, but I'll be looking into a way that we can uh, maybe add that to display shapes or something like that to draw arcs. Uh, so that's what I got. Thanks. Thanks, Foamy Guy. All right, next up is Hire Effect. All right, found the button this time. Uh, th uh, this past week, I worked on implementing the uh, Deep Sleep support for uh, the Find Next File feature, uh, or, or Set Next File feature, rather, um, which is important because Deep Sleeping basically looks like a reset as far as the chip is concerned, so it needs all sorts of special stuff to remember what the next file name should be. Um, I implemented sleep memory on the STM32 and uh, tested some sleep memory controls on other chips, um, but ultimately didn't get as far as I'd hoped to, so I'm going to be catching up this week. Um, I also got started on the exception carryover, uh, a, a, a method of storing exception information across runs, um, but I didn't get too far into that one. This week, uh, I'll just be continuing that work, um, implementing some menu examples, uh, and then uh, once that's wrapped up, um, I wanted to do a quick implementation of the STM32 RTC module, which has been kind of conspicuously missing module, mm -hmm. and uh, finish that exception storage PR. And that's it for me. Awesome. Thanks, Hire Effect. 
Next up is Jepler. Uh oh, I clicked over and started researching circle drawing algorithms uh, so I don't have my notes. <laughs> Squirrel. Because that's just the sort of thing that traps me. Um, yeah, so last week I started on the text for this guide on the OB2640 and OB7670 cameras. Um, I designed a keypad PCB and sent it away for manufacture. This will be used. Uh, this will be used in an upcoming project guide, but that's a ways out. Revision A ended up with some pretty obvious problems. I had sent it because I felt like I was in a hurry, and that is always a mistake. Don't do that. Uh, it can probably be bodged into working, but Revision B, which has also been sent away from fabrication, hopefully fixes the problems. I put in a couple of timekeeping PRs over the weekend, uh, two different approaches to dealing with time spans on the tiny boards uh, that doesn't require rebooting to keep time.monotonic values small. And for myself, I continued working on a Python library for a module called the ES100, which receives the North American time signal. Uh, the library is pretty solid now, and it can receive the time almost every minute in usual conditions. So this week, my top work is on the camera guide. I completed the photos this morning, I made a really good dent in the text, and uh, where I'm at is this fritzing diagram, which I may share into the channel. It is um, just a mess, and it will be daunting to try to get it into something that is even useful to anybody. Um, anyway, so uh, soon, this ES100 library, I should create a cookie cutter version of it and add it into the community bundle, because this is a module that you can buy. Um, for ticks, I need to see if a built-in ticks module with a couple of functions uh, add, add a number of ticks to a time, subtract a subtract two times, and check if a time is before another time or not, uh, if that would fit into the flash space we have available. And then um, I mentioned this uh, PR. We, I'll talk about it in the weeds. Um, we have an idea for splitting up these internal objects called type objects, and it looks like it will save over one kilobyte of flash storage on our smallest boards like the Trinket M0. So we'd really like to do it. Uh, we just need to figure out some details about how to move forward. So we'll talk about that soon in the weeds. And as for fun stuff, uh, this weekend I visited Sioux Falls, South Dakota, which is a couple hours drive away. High, part, high point, uh, that is the most exciting point, was called the Palisade State Park. It's a small park, but with some lovely stone formations and a river flowing through it. I'll share a picture of that in just a second. So that's what I've been up to. Thanks, Jeff. All right, next up is Jerry. Let's see, I'll explain that, my picture in a minute. <laughs> um, so uh, last week was all spent playing with our grandchildren and a, a great time doing that. And uh, next week is going to be mostly recovering from playing with grandchildren. Um, and I do hope to spend some, find some time to dig into an, an issue that came up uh, a couple of weeks ago uh, with SDIO on the STM32, uh, getting some errors. And um, I haven't opened an issue yet because I'm still trying to uh, create a, a good a good example of, of the issue itself. But uh, and, and Jeff had confirmed it. And I guess that it may be a a known issue as well. So we'll deal with that hopefully some this week. And yeah, and the picture posted there is the, the baby birds that hatched in the, in the bird cam birdhouse. So I'd find to watch them. Cute. Uh, five, five little sparrows in there. Awesome. Thank you, Jerry. Thanks for the bird pick. Uh, next up is Katni. All right. Thanks, Scott. So last week, published the QT Tranky Guide, uh, which also includes the newest template, which is I squared C for CircuitPython. Um, so that uh, will go into other guides eventually as well. I updated the MCP9808 guide for the Stemma QT version. That was the I squared C um, sensor that we used for the template and realized that the guide had never been updated finished up the PR to create the CircuitPython Community Code of Conduct and Cookie Cutter. This was uh, brought up by someone who pointed out that the Adafruit Code of Conduct was going into all community libraries as well, and uh, it definitely was far more appropriate to have a more community-based code of conduct. So uh, I had a lot of feedback on that, as I said in my uh, hug reports, 
And uh, we put together a community code of conduct that is more general, refuse, refers to product or project uh, maintainers um, and things like that. Um, so it's, uh, it's far more applicable to the libraries that it's going into, which is excellent. Um, I updated the Adafruit Community Code of Conduct with a few things based on that PR and a suggestion from the community moderators on Discord. I added the NeoKey library to the bundle and fixed up the docs and so on that goes with that. Published the NeoKey 1x4 guide. So that's an I2C breakout that's four keys uh, in a row. And I filed an issue on CircuitPython about renaming uh, underscore pixel buff and or Adafruit underscore pixel buff to make them drop in replacements for each other. Um, Dan and I talked about this. It may be worth talking about in the weeds. Um, I'd like to see it happen in seven because the sooner it happens, the less we have to less code and fixes and other things we have to deal with right now. Um, searching for those things on learn returns less than one page. And that to me is a good time to do it. Mm -hmm. So uh, I would like to see that done sooner rather than later. Uh, today so far, help track down an issue with Adabot not running the reports after the reports, uh, for example, the one that was used uh, earlier in the meeting, um, after the move to Maine, went through all my guide feedback and I moved Circ up to the main branch. Uh, I did not delete the master branch. I protected it so no one can push to it, but I want to make sure that um, folks who are involved with Circ up uh, take a look at that and are absolutely certain <laughs> that nothing is using master um, before I delete it. So. Uh, I commented on the issue where I was requested to move it to Maine and said, please, you know, here's a couple suggestions of things to look at and make sure that uh, nothing is, um, nothing else is, is, is using that. Uh, and then this week it's Macropad time. So I'll be doing the Macropad guide and a Macropad CircuitPython library. And that should be most of my week. Um, in quote unquote fun stuff, I'm on day 19 mm -hmm. of my 14-day mandatory quarantine. Um, as for actually fun stuff, I built the chroma key ring for a retro-reflective green screen setup over the weekend. Uh, it's something JP designed, and it's super nice. It It's designed to go over camera lenses, but it also fits over webcams. Um, same exact setup. Um, I'll be using it on a webcam, I think, um, when it's all said and done. But uh, we we tested it out and everything works great. Um, it's a little rotary encoder on a STEMI QT board with a NeoPixel ring on it, and it all fits into this 3D printed bracket thing. Um, and then I will be out uh, the 1st of July through the 5th of July. I put out in quotes because see the quarantine timing. I'm not going anywhere. Um, I just won't be working. And that's what I've got. Awesome. Thank you, Katni. I need to add that to my calendar so I know not to bug you. Um, last uh, but not least, we have Maker Melissa. Uh, hello, let's see here. Um, <clears throat> last week I uh, worked on, I split the web serial ESP tool up uh, so it's into two different files uh, for the uh, JavaScript code uh, so that I could separate the UI code from the core code so that uh, it can be applied with different user interfaces. I worked on a JavaScript port of the of an NVS partition generator for Whippersnapper, and I'm making good progress on that. At this point, I'm just comparing the bytes and fixing the differences. Um, and this week, I am going to go. I'm going to finish that up, and I will. Uh, finish a demo UI that makes use of that, which shouldn't be too difficult. And I'll work on a, if I have time, I'll work on a guide I had on pause using Microsoft Globe. Uh, for fun stuff, I got a new YouTube video published this past weekend, and I started on my next one, which is a multi-part build series. And that's it. Awesome. Thank you, Melissa. And uh, beware, I'm, I'm hoping to steal you away shortly. Oh yeah, uh, for the blue the web Bluetooth stuff. So. Ah, okay. Um, I'll take a look at it. I'm I'm kind of curious, but you'll probably have to make it not suck, <laughs> make it better than what I can do. Okay, no worries. Cool. Uh, all right, and that's it for status updates. Uh, next we have the last section, which is in the weeds. 
Uh, in the weeds is a chance for us to just have any sort of longer form discussion stuff that we want to do. Um, oh yeah, I have PC fans. <laughs> Um, so first off, we'll uh, kick it over to Jeff for the first In the Weeds topic. Hello again. Hello. Um, so there is this flash saving PR that I was talking about. I'll, uh, well, you can find the link in the notes doc. Uh, it's very low level stuff. And Damien and Jimmo at MicroPython have expressed interest in the concept. So I think our ultimate goal is to upstream it. But um, in the context of some of these um, space problems, like putting keypad instead of gamepad on the smallest boards, uh, putting in a ticks library, it would also be kind of nice to have it right now in CircuitPython. So how do we want to approach that? If we want to merge it now or soon in CircuitPython, do we split the type object up in all builds, which is easiest, or just constrain builds, which is harder, the reason we, we might want to do it on only some boards is there's probably a slight performance impact. Um, and of course, if we decide to go through MicroPython, um, it would be well after the 7.0 release window before we would be able to then merge it in from a released version of MicroPython. Um, yeah, so what do people want to do? Don't wait. Merge it now. Do it in all builds, is what I would say. I, I agree because we don't know how long it will take to merge upstream and we can always when upstream does various things with it you know maybe under our, we would do it under their direction then we can pull it back yeah. all right um so the status of that pr then is that i feel like the the core idea is pretty solid but i only did uh, the structures for one particular build, and so there's a bunch of stuff that doesn't build. So probably, well, maybe over the weekend if I feel like it. Otherwise, next week I'll work on getting all the boards to build. It's mostly a mechanical process of you'll get an error at each uh, type structure that needs to be modified, and you just modify it, and it's reasonably straightforward. So uh, I will work on getting that ready to merge, getting a green build on the PR, and then we can talk about it again. Yeah, and don't feel like you have to do it on the weekend. You could count that as eight approval. All right. There's just uh, already too much stuff to do in a week, so. <laughs> yeah, especially because <laughs> you're half somewhere. <laughs> yeah, well. um, yeah, I mean, I do count these things that are not exactly, you know, not what uh, Lamora has prioritized me to do. I generally count them as work, but I do them outside of, you know, when I'm trying to get that stuff done. and Right. I, I hope I'm doing that right, but nobody has asked me to do it differently yet, so I'll keep doing that. Yeah, I think you're fine. All right. I Thank just you. wanted to emphasize that. Okay, I appreciate uh, that very much. That it, that it is work. Um, okay, next up we have a question from Dan. Um, so this is, I think I know the answer to this, but um, I think maybe we should do a release sooner rather than later. Like maybe I should even start one today or do it tomorrow, and that won't have a few of the final API changes in it, so it'll probably be an alpha release, but it has a number of significant changes that and improvements, and I'd rather not wait maybe for these other things, uh, because there, there'll still be a tiny amount of churn in a couple of APIs, I think. Specifically, another thing that we're going to discuss right after this, which is about PyPixel buff. <laughs> Yeah. Maybe I won't wait for those. Does that sound all right? That's totally fine right. with me. Okay. All right. Then I will make an alpha as soon as possible. Okay. okay. Yeah. I mean, there was a, there's been a lot of stuff that went in since the last alpha. It's, so. it's really impressive. Like when I even did, yeah, the last alpha, it took hours. <laughs> there were so many pull requests. Yeah. And we have like 50 or 60 since then, I think. So. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. All right. I think it's fine. Yeah. I, th I think I, I kind of hope that our beta process is going to be pretty quick because um, I don't think I don't think we're that unstable. We're just like we're doing big things and still keeping our stability pretty, pretty good, I think. So, yeah, yeah, I, I mean, think there are a number of things that are broken, but we can fix those later. Right. It's no worse than what we have right now. 
Right, and also like the release candidate phase is a cha- is also a chance for us to right. fix any egregious bugs or, or really really bad bugs. Okay. So, yeah, I, I kind of expect we'll have an alpha or two more, and then do maybe a beta, just to like do two weeks of bug hunting, and then we'll do RCs after that. Okay. Something like that. Do we need to get together and triage those seven O bugs, or is that uh, not not really a, a joint effort? Um, I, maybe I'll start doing that, and then I'll consult with you if I feel like we should have a discussion. I think I probably will. There probably will be some that I feel like oh, maybe we should really try to fix this. The question is, when do we get the resources? How do we schedule those? That I think. Yeah. I think the other question for me is like, what other, what new milestones do we want to add to move them to? Like, do we just want to either keep in seven O or move to, move to long term, or do we want to have a optimistic seven X bug fix thing? Yeah. But generally seven. I, I think 7X, we want a seven X or a seven XX. Yeah, generally seven X stuff doesn't get done though. No, we haven't been fixing those bugs. We've been writing new new code. Yeah. <laughs> That's why we need to switch gears a little and yeah, stabilize. Think, yeah, I think it's I think it's fine if we were to spend a couple weeks on it, just doing bug hunting. But there's always more bugs. That's the danger. Um, but yeah, I think I was expecting Dan to just do a first pass. So yeah, yeah. I think I I mean I think I'm more worried about. We have had some regressions since five, and mm-hmm. it would be nice to fix some of the regressions from since five. Yeah. Now I, yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. All right, I'll, I'll make a pass at it after I get the re- next release out. Okay. Oh, I feel. See how I feel. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Do we want to do this last topic? Yeah. We do. <laughs> so I think. Um, Kat, do you want to say your idea? or is Well, a... I'll, I'll explain what I want. Yeah. And I feel like you probably have a better way of doing it than I can even imagine. So what I want is Adafruit Pi pixel buff and underscore pixel buff to be drop-in replacements for each other. And the reason for that is we put color wheel in them uh, deliberately yeah. so that it could be used in code. And the problem is now... I, to make it work on all boards, to make an example work on all boards, which with the templates and the CircuitPython Essentials pages and so on, this is this is a necessity. Um, I'm doing try accept imports, and it's, it's just it's ridiculous. So, my initial thought was rename one of them, but I think Dan's got a better idea of how to do it. Well, what I was thinking is that we would we could add Adafruit Pixel Buff as an alias for both of them. Or at least the very least the inset, so that if the build doesn't have it, it would be imported properly, and you wouldn't have to say like, well, which one is it? So just like Adafruit bus device, I mean, this was really mm-hmm. Katni's idea. But like, well, why isn't this like Adafruit bus device where right. there's a native version and there's a Python version and they have the same name, and we should do the same thing, and we should probably give, take this opportunity to rename Pixel Buff. Pi pixel buff to Adafruit pixel buff. Uh, okay. Or maybe underscore pixel buff, but uh, I don't know. Uh, something, something that's the same, and we can make it upward compatible for a release, uh, for this release by just you can give things alternate names, both in Python and in natively. I think I follow. So that you as, long as, import... as long as it does what I want. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it will do right. It'll, I think it'll do what you want. The main the main problem we have is dealing with multiple ver- incompatible versions of libraries. That's the hardest part. Right, but if we are um, if we're renaming the if we rename the library, it's not this this Adafruit Pi Pixel Buff is not first of all it's not frozen into anything. That was the whole point of it. Right. Um, second of all, um, it, there's guides that use it, but like I said, I search for it. It's less than a page. Okay. Good. Um, so updating and it's, and it's almost always in 
It's never it's never used in the code because I, I think I'm the only person that's ever called color wheel. Like people don't really realize it's there and I haven't pushed it because it's kind of frustrating at the moment. Um, is is it's in the listing of libraries that you need to copy to CircuitPy. Like that's pretty much all it is in most guides. Because if you use a trinket or a gemma, et cetera, those require PyPixel buff. And so it says like, or QtPy, it says like, you know, copy these two files, but then you use NeoPixel, you don't use PyPixel buff. So renaming it is, I mean, it, it would be quick. It would be a relatively quick fix. Okay. So and I, then we can go ahead. I'm not necessarily, I'm not against this, but I want to throw out another option, okay. which is move color wheel into its own module instead of having it tacked on the pixel buff. What, I mean, what do you, so you're talking a whole other library that you install or that you copy a whole, or are you talking a native module? I, I'm, I'm talking, it would be, you could do the exact same thing. You could have a native version that is the same name, but you could also provide a, a Python version as well. Um, so you're, you're talking about in circuit Python. I'm just trying to make, make sure I'm clear on what you're suggesting. Yeah. Like you could have a native circuit Python module for it that you could also have a, like, it, it, it feels weird to me that it's on pixel buff. That's why I'm throwing this up. Well, the idea was, yeah. I mean, the idea was that it was more applicable to NeoPixel and dot star, but because the because they moved to using pixel buff and pi pixel buff that's why we tossed it in there right. um i'm fine with it being a native module like that's totally i i would i would support that as well yeah um that would eliminate this problem because the only thing that is really importing the p pixel buff or pi pixel buff is color wheel um, right. Otherwise, otherwise you're using it indirectly through dot star and NeoPixel. Correct. Yeah. Correct. And that, and that, and your, and your statement about like, nobody really knows it's there is also a sign to me that it might be better to have a like, um, pixel something, pixel swirl, pixel something, and like a, a module. You can just call it, call it color wheel. Yeah, you could just if you're being if you're being obtuse about it, then you're you're gonna run into the same issue I ran into when I first started with this, which is what is wheel? What does that even mean? Does so it, okay. go go ahead. Are there any other pieces of functionality that you might want to put in some library that has color wheel in it? Right. Um, probably not, and here's why. Um it I I don't wanna run into a situation where we've got you know, I don't want to. I don't want to run into this situation again, where I've got this color wheel library that does other things, and then we've got this native module that just does color wheel, and then we're like doing weird cross import things, like or the or the naming is different, etc. Um, I I feel like it can be its own thing and just be, just be that would be okay. And it's too slow to write in just Python, is that right? Um, I don't have an answer to that. I it's, don't know. It's faster to write and see. I mean, if you're, you just got yeah, If you're calling right, it all the time from your, yeah. <laughs> if you generate them up front, it's fine. But sometimes you need to generate them as you go, and then it is pretty slow. Um, like if you were like a pixel util, you know, that's not necessarily the, the name I would choose, but it's sort of like, kind of like I made this simple math library that only has two or three things in it. It's not native, but um, yeah, as long as as the there's only a small amount of stuff in it, but it, it it's sort of like a helper for the for pipe for pixel buff. I don't know that just like com computations that take too much time in Python, and you'd want to be native because otherwise, if it isn't too slow, if it isn't too slow as opposed to just being slower, then I would say forget it. Let's take it out of the native one and make it a separate library. So, well, yeah. part of the reason I wanted it integrated into something was that we're, we were copying and pasting the color wheel code into every single piece of code.py that had, that called it. And, I, and that just seemed, that seemed dumb. Like we could, there's so many easier, you know, there's so much an easier way to do this if we integrated it into 
And in this case, having a native module would be my would would fit my definition of integrated into something. Um, I think I think it's fine. I think having a native module is okay because it's so commonly like our blinky. Right? Yeah, like I I agree. Like for sure, we rainbows is like what we do. The uh, yeah, and the <laughs> That's other our default everything. I actually just looked in the rain. There's al already like a PyPI package called Rainbow because I was like, oh, it would be cool to call it Rainbow. Um, we can make a plural, then you would import rainbows, but. <laughs> Rainbow I L. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Um, um, I'm okay. I'm okay having it just be a specific thing. Like Carter suggested in the chat to co-locate it with like HSV to RGB converters, but like Python already has color sys, yeah. and we also already have fancy LED. So like, I I kind of like your proposal. Of like, this is this is like version two of of blink right and so like yeah. it's okay for us to just have import color wheel color wheel dot color wheel or whatever color, yeah. re color okay. wheel dot compute maybe like um okay like i i'm okay with having just a a one-off for it um but i don't know does anybody disagree with me uh no it's, it's I, not even an object right it's not even a class right so yeah, it's just like a module with a function. Yeah. And I, yeah. I feel like I feel like we probably don't need a Python version. Like we could make one, but I don't think we need it because it seems like it's not gonna take up that much space. Yeah. <laughs> Says me. I know well, what do I know? I mean part of the problem is that if we couple it to Pixel Buff. Yeah. Uh which I think is part of the reason it's in the Pixel Buff library to begin with, it might be might be better to, to have it separate as well. Um, but again, I, I'm okay having a library that's just Adafruit CircuitPython color wheel. Like, yeah, no, I understand. Um, yeah. So there would be, we would have to, like, if, if we made it separate then, yeah, that's going to change the code in a lot of libraries. So there will be a lot of... Um. Like I said, I I don't know how how much it's used. Um, it's like used the examples, you mean? Okay. Like I've used it, and uh -huh. um, Todd Toddbot on Twitter, um, Todd yeah. Kurt, he found it, um, <laughs> which means that anybody who follows him and uses his code is using it. But like, that's kind of the extent of it because, like I said, it's a little bit frustrating to use right now. So, I'm really the only one doing it which means there's only a certain set of examples and so on that need to be updated. Um, and we, um, I think, have like a lot of stuff in place to be able to find you know, where, where it needs to be changed. Right. And we can leave pixel buff the same then. We don't That's need also, to change pixel yeah. buff. Like it's still kind of annoying because you have to do the imports and stuff, but like we don't expect anybody to do that because we expect them to use dot star or neopixel but we right. can still fix that i think that would be good to fix in the long run okay so, i'm yeah. not yeah. i'm not going to argue against it but. right suppose we called it like pixel colors or something like that uh we can talk about a name yeah yeah okay <laughs> um okay uh sounds good i will reply to the issue with okay. what we've discussed and um Dan, you and I can work through a name because, like I said, I, I would like to see this done quickly. So um, yeah. I, I don't want it to just sit as something that um, we eventually get to, quote unquote. <laughs> right. Carter, you um, simple I.O., but we're, we're, simple I.O. is only no. in simple I.O. No. It's got a bunch of other stuff in it, and yeah, we don't want to make that is, native. Probably, simple I.O. exists, actually. Simple yeah. I.O. is really just like, appeasing people coming from Arduino and wanting what they want. Yeah. But reality is not a lot of people actually picked it up. Um, <laughs> Neradoc says, I didn't know pixelbuff.colorwheel existed. Right, and that's exactly my point, is that that is a little bit obtuse. Right, and I think putting underscore, it in... under, underscore pixelbuff.colorwheel is, is a little bit obtuse, and so I haven't... I haven't pushed our internal folks to use it yet. I haven't pushed 
you know, guides to be using it yet, like I do, like I said, but I, once we've got it in a better place and it, and the imports make more sense, yeah. I will be pushing everybody to use it. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll do a straw man implementation of it and see how big it is. It's already in there. Okay. It's in pixel buff. Oh, that's right. Yeah. I could just take it out and see what, how many bytes I save if yep. I take it out. Yeah. 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 Kathy, okay. do you think we could change it from returning a tuple to returning an integer? What do you mean? It doesn't return a tuple. Okay, it's just the one in PyPixel buff that returns a tuple, and the one in the core returns an, Wait, no. an integer? I thought it... Wait, no, it the takes an integer. Maybe it, maybe it returns a tuple. I'm not sure. I'll look into it. A better version. Because that's be likely to uh, work the same with Pixel buff and PyPixel buff, um, you know, they, they take both kinds, but it's likely to be a little bit smaller as a, oh, good, it returns a sensible thing. It's just different than what the Py. I was looking at Adafruit PyPixel buff documentation. Ah. Oh. And assuming that underscore pixel buffs color wheel did the same thing as this documentation said, which it doesn't. <laughs> well, that's okay. even worse, right? Well, yeah, we that's not good. That. We can fix yeah, it. we'll fix it. Yep. Thank you. Well, okay. I mean, it's whatever it's doing right now works fine, and it's just I was reading documentation for not this thing. Yeah. But the thing you. that I thought was maybe the same. Anyway. Okay. That's all. I'll step all out right. again. <laughs> okay. Otherwise, right. it's a two. All right. We'll think. We'll, uh, let's cogitate on this for a little while. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Thank you for bringing that up. That's a good idea. Okay. Uh, that's it. Uh, it is 95 degrees in here, so I am not going to be here very much longer. Uh, this has been the CircuitPython Weekly for June 28th, 2021. Thank you to everyone who participated. If you want to support Adafruit and CircuitPython, and those of us that work on CircuitPython, uh, who are paid by Adafruit, consider purchasing from the Adafruit shop at adafruit.com. The video of this meeting will be released on YouTube at youtube.com slash Adafruit, and the podcast will be available on major podcast services. Uh, it will also be featured in the Python for Microcontrollers newsletter. Vid visit adafruitdaily.com to subscribe. Just check the Python for Microcontrollers newsletter box there. The next meeting will be held uh, next Tuesday. Big flashing lights Tuesday, not Monday. Uh, 24 hours later than normal. Uh, Tuesday at 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific. Uh, the meeting is held on the Adafruit Discord server, which you can join by going to the URL adafru.it slash discord. Uh, to be notified about the meeting and any changes to the time or day, you can ask to be added to the CircuitPython Nisa's role on Discord. And with that, uh, we hope to see you all next week. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.